Hello. In this video, we'll consider the tax consequences of corporate distributions and we'll look at a problem. This is corporate distributions problem one. Kiwi owns all the stock of Fruit Sushi Inc., which is a C corporation that creates delicious fruit sushi. Kiwi's basis in the stock is $24,000. In the first year of the corporation's existence, Fruit Sushi Inc. earned $30,000 of earnings and profits, which is also known as EMP. The EMP was earned equally throughout the year. On July 1st of the first year, Fruit Sushi Inc. borrowed $50,000 from the Big Apple Bank and distributed $40,000 of cash to Kiwi. Determine the tax consequences to Kiwi and Fruit Sushi from the distribution. So whenever we're dealing with a distribution, you should always start off by looking whether it's going to be a property distribution or a stock distribution. And the way that we distinguish those two is if you look at code section 317, it defines property as money, securities, and any other property except for stock in the corporation. So a property distribution cons uh, consists of cash, money, securities, other property, other than stock in the actual corporation, which here would be Fruit Sushi Inc. So here, Kiwi is receiving a distribution of $40,000 cash, so this is considered a normal property or cash distribution. Whenever we have a normal, uh, a normal property or cash distribution, right? So we have a cash or property distribution. There is a four-part step, or four steps, I should say, you should take, and you should always follow them in order. If you follow them out of order, you will get the tax consequences wrong. So the first step is to consider the tax consequences, I'll just, call, I'll just say tax, to the corporation making the distribution. So what we're really talking about here is you're looking at the property that's being distributed and any tax consequences with respect to that property being distributed, the corporation needs to recognize them. The second step is to adjust current EMP for step one. If step one has any consequences, then you have to adjust um, step two, the current EMP. If there's no consequences in step one, then you don't have to worry about step two. Step three, and this is where the meat of the analysis really is most of the time, the tax consequences to the shareholders. So the tax to the shareholders, I'll put that, I'll put an S at the end of that, optional S, in case there's multiple shareholders. So step one and two are done with respect to the corporation. Step three, the tax consequences to the shareholder or shareholders is done for each shareholder or shareholders and you have to do it individually for each at that point number three and then finally step four which is the last step is to adjust the accumulated EMP because the accumulated EMP for the year at the end of the year will roll over to the next year and be the beginning accumulated EMP for next year so it's very important very important to understand that so again, I want to emphasize, you have to go through all four steps in order. If you go out of order, you will get the tax consequences with respect to all these items incorrect. Now, I want to note that we're asked here to determine tax consequences to Kiwi and Fruit Sushi from the distribution. Steps one, two, and four deal with Fruit Sushi, the corporation distributee. Step three deals with Kiwi. But again, to get all the way to step four, we're going to have to determine step three, the consequences to the shareholder before we can do step four, which is the last step. Now, let's go ahead and let's analyze and go through the four steps. A little shortcut, and I'll explain why, is with cash distributions, which is what we have here, right? Kiwi is receiving a $40,000 cash distribution. If there is a cash distribution, steps one and two will be no consequences. So there'll be no consequences with respect to step one to the corporation and there'll be no consequences where you need to adjust step two, the current EMP, because there is no step one. And the reason step one has no consequences is because you're looking at the property that's being um, 
distributed, and if there's any inherent gain or loss, you may have to recognize that. Now with cash, as we know, the the basis is always the face value. You can't have any differences, so there's never going to be uh, any uh, tax consequences to the corporation with respect to step one. There will still be EMP adjustments, and we'll talk about that for step four. Step two will not change as well. The current EMP will remain whatever it's whatever it is in the problem. It's not adjusted from step one. So here we're told in the first year there's thirty thousand dollars of EMP, and we'll look more at that in step three and the effect of why we need EMP. So now, now that we've gone through steps one and step two, and we've determined that there's no tax consequences, we can now focus our attention on step three, which as I mentioned before, is usually the meat of this analysis. So step three, the tax consequences to the shareholder or shareholders, here that's Kiwi, right? That's the shareholder. There's three steps within step three. So there's three steps to consider within step three. So the first step is to determine the amount of the distribution. So we have to determine the amount of the distribution. The amount of the distribution is the cash received by the shareholder plus the fair market value of non-cash property, so I'll just say a property, minus any liabilities assumed by the shareholder. Now the fair market value on the property is the date of the distribution, just so you know. So here, Kiwi is just receiving cash, there's nothing else. So the amount of the distribution is $40,000. The second step, and this is very important, is to determine the amount of this $40,000 distribution that's considered a dividend. So determine the dividend. And the reason why we do that is because, as many of you know, the tax consequences of a dividend are different than with respect to a return of capital or capital gain distribution. Very important difference because historically dividends have been taxed at ordinary tax rates. So to look further into the amount that's considered a dividend, you have to understand that code section 316 defines a dividend as any distribution of property made by a corporation to its shareholders out of earnings and profits of the taxable year. Now it doesn't say accumulated earnings and profits or current earnings and profits. It just says earnings and profits. So that means we have to look at both accumulated earnings and profits and current earnings and profits. So here we're told that in the first year of existence, Fruit, Su Fruit Sushi earned $30,000 of earnings and profits. And we are still in the first year when the distribution occurs when we're looking at the tax consequences of the distribution. So that means accumulated EMP is zero. Why is it zero? Because in the year that a business starts, accumulated EMP is always zero. Because there's no earnings that have taken place at the beginning of the business. All there's been is formation. That's it. Now there's an exception to this if there's a reorganization or a merger, but that's not what we have here. This is just a very simple business. Okay, you would be told if there was accumulated earnings and profits um, that it started out with, and we're not told that. So almost always, accumulated earnings and profits will be zero in the first year, again, with the limited circumstances with a uh, reorganization that applies. The current earnings and profits, well, we're told that at, during the year, there's $30,000 of earnings and profits. That's for this current year. Now, you might be noting that the distribution occurs on July 1st, so you might be wondering, well, do we take half of 30000 since the EMP was, e was earned equally? Well, Section 316 states, regardless, at the time the amount of the distribution was made. So basically, we look at end of the year. For EMP, it's always the end of the year. So the idea is that at the end of the year, there's $30,000 of current EMP. We also take into account all the distributions at the end of the year, which is 
they're basically reviewing, since we do taxes, when the year closes, right? You're not doing this as you're going. You're doing it in the year when, it, when, when everything's closed for the year and you're applying the rules, the tax, you know, the tax law, you're looking at everything in total for the year. So whatever the EMP is for the year, you look at the end, the end of the year. It's not rateably at the time of the distribution, it's at the end. Same with the amount of distributions, you'll see some problems later on where we have multiple distributions that occur during the year. So again, the amount of the dividend is to the extent of EMP. So really what we're doing in step two is we're determining, an, another way to think about this is determine the EMP. Finally, step three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do step three up here. Step three, we determine the tax consequences, specifically knowing step one and step two of the $40,000 distribution. Now, before I go through this, and I go through the analysis from the checklist in the previous video, which if you haven't seen that checklist, I recommend stopping and watching my checklist video on corporate distributions. I want to mention that the $50,000 borrowed by Fruit Sushi, that has nothing to do with the effect of distributions. Even if Fruit Sushi is paying $40,000 from that loan, it makes no difference. We're, looking, we're focusing on EMP, not the loan amount, just so you know. Okay, back to step three. So we're determining the tax consequences of this $40,000 distribution. And we know that our EMP is $30,000 because zero plus 30,000 is 30,000. And by the way, if you have negative accumulated EMP and positive current EMP, or you have vice or the opposite, you have positive accumulated EMP and um, negative current EMP, you'll see what happens in later problems. I go through that discussion. So please make sure you go through those various problems. There's multiple problems to consider. And that's really what the heart is of this analysis in step two within step three, right, of the three steps, okay? So, um, but if you have positive accumulated EMP and positive current EMP, you can add them together to determine this. Now, another thing I want to mention is that the current EMP, and the reason I didn't mention this one is because there was no effect, but the current EMP in step two, this is reflected after step two. So in step two, remember that we adjust current EMP, which would be the $30,000, for step one. So if there was anything to adjust in step one, like a gain, you would adjust step two and then that amount in step two would be reflected here. So if we had a $2,000 gain in step one to the corporation, and then we had the $30,000 current EMP, we would add $2,000 to that in step two because $2,000 gain, and you'll see this done in later problems, and we'd have $32,000 of current EMP to put here. But we have no adjustment under step one, so you don't have to worry about that. So see how that works? So that's why we do everything in order. So the current EMP in step three comes from step two, okay? And then the three sub-steps, we'll call these three sub-steps of step three, okay? Again, we determine the amount, we determine the dividends, we have to really determine EMP, and then finally in step three, we determine the tax consequences of the $40,000 distribution. So again, from our checklist discussion in the previous in the previous video, the way this works is it's a waterfall. You basically go through a three-part waterfall and you capture the full forty thousand dollars until you come to the end. So the first stop, stop number one, is to the extent of EMP that's available, you have a dividend. You have a dividend. Okay. So here we have $30,000 of EMP. So that means 30,000 of the 40,000 is considered a dividend. And a dividend is taxed, well at the current time of the video, it's taxed under just like a long-term capital gain if it's a qualified dividend. But remember historically, dividends have been taxed at ordinary income rates. Okay, so we still have some left. If this was 40,000, we'd be done. You wouldn't go to step two or step three of this waterfall. That's how a waterfall works. We need $40,000 that needs to go at some point of that waterfall. Picture a waterfall in your mind that has multiple levels. The first level we stop at is dividend. So to the extent of EMP, which was again, we determined 30,000, right? Zero plus 30 is 30,000. That's where we got that number. So the, to the extent of the EMP, that's the dividend. Okay, we have $10,000 left. So stop two, is what we call return 
of capital. Return of capital. And with return of capital, just like many other tax concepts that you've learned, um, with return of capital, what you're looking at is the basis of the, of the investment or whatever it is. Here, it's the stock. It's the $24,000 basis in the stock. So the next part basically is a return of capital that reduces the basis of stock and is not taxed. So basically, you say, okay, we have $40,000 total distribution that needs to be captured in this waterfall. $40,000 minus $30,000 is $10,000. Do we have enough to capture it in the second waterfall? Yes, because we have $24,000 in the basis, which is greater than $10,000. So that means all $10,000 remaining is considered return of capital and it's not taxable. It reduces basis. So this dividend is taxable as a dividend. Return of capital is not taxable. But you should still label it as return of capital because sometimes you'll get CPA or exam questions that specifically ask, ask what amount of the, of the distribution is considered a dividend, what amount is considered return of capital. Here, $10,000 return of capital. And notice when you have $30,000 plus $10,000, you get $40,000. So that's what we mean by um, a waterfall. Now, what would happen if we didn't have enough basis? Let's say the basis was only $6,000. So you do $30,000 plus $6,000. Well, then you would go to the remaining portion, number three, which is capital gain distribution. Capital gain distribution. Capital gain distribution is, let me separate this, sorry. Capital gain distribution is taxed like a capital gain. If, if the stock is held for more than a year, it's considered a long-term capital gain. If it's held for a year or less, it's short-term capital gain. And that affects the tax consequences with respect to that item. Well, here we have none. But again, if we only had $6,000 of basis in Kiwi, it'd be 30000 dividend, 6000 return of capital, 4000 capital gain distribution. And whatever's left over will go to capital gain distribution. Between, I'm sorry, among these three, you will get the full amount here. It will always work. All right? But notice in this problem, we got everything in the first two levels of the waterfall. 30000 dividend, 10000 return of capital. So that means the tax consequences to Kiwi of this distribution, the $40,000 distribution, 30000 is considered dividend, which is taxable at dividends rates. If it's qualified dividend, it'll be a qualified dividend taxed at long-term capital gains rates. At the time of this video, could change in the future because it was taxed as ordinary income in the past. And then 10000 is return of capital, which is not taxed. But we're not done. We're not done because step two reduces basis. So, I'm sorry, part two of the waterfall, I should say. Part two. Two of the waterfall, and by the way, this is the section 301 waterfall under section 301. This is the way that we tax distributions. We reduce basis. Why? Because we have return of capital, which means there's no tax consequences. So we start with the adjusted basis given to us in the problem, which is 24,000. That's the starting. Minus number two from the waterfall, which is 10,000. That gives us the end adjusted basis. The ending adjusted basis for the year to um, Kiwi, which is $14,000. So here are the tax consequences to Kiwi from step three. We're Because we're done with step three, but now I want to summarize. The tax consequences are the $40,000 distribution, $30,000 is a dividend, tax is a dividend. Again, special, the qualified dividend rules may apply depending on it. And then $10,000 is return of capital, which is not taxable. However, that $10,000 return of capital, it reduces the $24,000 basis. $24,000 starting point minus the $10,000 return of capital gives us an ending adjusted basis of $14,000. So if Kiwi sells the stock, Next year, that's going to, for a certain amount, that's going to reduce the amount of basis, which means there's going to be increased amount of gain potential. So that's very important. All right. And again, there's no capital gain distribution. So if you're asked what the capital gain distribution is, that's going to be zero. All right. So we just finished step three. We're done with that.
So now we're going to step four. This is the last part of our analysis. We've determined the tax consequences of Kiwi. Now we're going to determine the tax consequences to Fruit Sushi, the corporation. And again, steps one and two deal with the consequences to, um, to Fruit Sushi, the corporation. But remember, there were no consequences. And we needed step one and two for step three for the EMP, which we're done with up to step three. So now we're looking at step four. And we have our own analysis to do. And we're focusing on adjusting accumulated EMP. So really what the purpose of this is, we're trying to get the accumulated EMP at the end of the year so we can start the next year for EMP. Again, as I mentioned before, the accumulated EMP for this problem that we started with at the beginning of this year is zero because the corporation was formed in its first year. But in year two, there is going to be an accumulated EMP, or at least you have to calculate it. So, I mean, it could be zero, it could be negative, but still there's been a, a calculation versus this year and the year of formation, there wasn't a calculation because it's always going to be zero. Again, unless there's a reorganization, but you shouldn't have to worry about that because you'll, you'll know that you'll know that from the from the facts. Okay, so in order to calculate, we always start with the beginning accumulated EMP for the year. Again, the rollover accumulated EMP, which again is zero because this is the year of formation. It's for, it's the first year. So that's going to be zero. Then we add or we subtract away the current year EMP because it can be negative or can be positive. And if you don't understand really the idea of EMP, I have a video that explains why we use EMP and it goes through what exactly it is as well. So we add or subtract the current year EMP. Well, here the current year EMP is 30,000. We're told that. So we're going to add 30,000 to that number, all right? Then we add any adjustment that we did in step one or step two. So we'll just say step two because that's where we adjust current EMP. So the current year EMP is the one from the problem, and then we add step two. We add step two to that. So this current year EMP is not from step two. It's from the problem. Step two is the um, is any gain you'll see for any gain so again as I mentioned you're gonna see in later problems you're gonna have gains involved okay so we add that then this is the most important part this is why you do this stuff in order you subtract away what's called a distribution adjustment and I'm gonna give you the general rule but I'll tell you there are a few exceptions to this but the general rule for the distribution adjustment this is the amount you subtract away is the dividend amount in step three. So here was our determination. We had $30,000 dividend. So it's not 40,000 because 10,000 of the 40,000 was a return of capital, 30,000 dividend. So this subtract away for distribution adjustment is the general rule. It's gonna be the dividend. The exception to this is when you have um, when you have property that's being distributed where the basis is greater than the fair market value, you're going to see some special rules because for remember for the distribution, the amount that we calculate, it's the amount of cash plus the fair market value of non-cash property minus any liabilities the shareholder assumes, that specific shareholder assumes. But if the basis is greater on that property, it actually goes, we, you might actually have to use the basis in this thing. So, you, so you'll see this in later um, examples. So we subtract away the dividend in number three that we calculated, again with one exception for, or some very um, small exceptions, I should say. Um, so we're not going to worry about that in this one because we don't have those special exceptions. So minus 30000 for the amount of the dividend, that's where that comes from, the dividend, not the return of capital, the dividend. It's not the 40000 it's the 30000 And then that gives us the accumulated EMP for next year. That gives us the ending accumulated EMP, which is also the amount for the beginning of next year. So zero plus 30,000 is positive 30 plus zero minus 30 is zero. So next year, at the beginning of the year, the uh, accumulated earnings and profits to start the year will be zero. So that's very important to understand. Okay. So if I gave you 
um, this another set of facts for year two. And I told you year two there was a distribution of I don't know ten thousand dollars, and there was um, five thousand dollars of of EMP. When you went through the analysis, you got to step three. You would when you do that determine the amount of EMP for the calculation. Accumulated EMP would be zero, and then the current year EMP would be five thousand. So that's why it's important. So we finished everything here for the consequences for kiwi and for fruit sushi. Let's just summarize by going again in order, f going through steps one, two, three, and four. Because again, um, when you do this analysis, you need to go through an order. And then to summarize it, it's also helpful to go in order as well to understand what's going on. And that shows you why the order is so important. So whenever you have a cash distribution, step one will always be zero. There's no consequences to the corporation with respect to any gain or loss as we recognize on the on that property distribution. Step two will also be zero because step two is a fact a function of step one. Okay? So step one is zero. So step two will also be no consequences. The current year EMP will be what you're told in the problem, which is the thirty thousand dollars. Step three is where the heart of the analysis is. That's where we determine the tax consequences to Kiwi, the shareholder, or all shareholders, if there's multiple shareholders. So remember that step three has three steps within. First, determine the amount of the distribution, which is the amount of cash plus the fair market value of non-cash property minus any liabilities that that shareholder has assumed or taken subject to, taken on. So that's the amount of the distribution. Step two within step three, so sub-step within the step, step two is determine the amount of EMP. And again, um, you take the accumulated EMP, which here is zero because the formation, it's a year formation, plus the current year EMP, but it's the current year EMP after step two, and that's why you're doing everything in order. See that? So it's the current year EMP, so it's a 30,000 current year EMP, with respect to any adjustment in step in number two, which there's none, so it's still 30,000. So EMP is 30,000. Finally, sub step three within step three is to determine the consequences of the distribution. So we take the $40,000 distribution, we apply our section 301, three part waterfall. For the first part or first level is whatever amount of earnings and profits that you calculated before that goes into the analysis, that is going to be considered a dividend, tax as a dividend. The second level or second part is return of capital for whatever's left, but to the extent of basis. So we had $40,000 distribution, 30,000 was captured in level one dividend because of the EMP. So that means 40 minus 30 is 10,000 left. So the question becomes for step two, 10,000, is there enough to be captured by the basis? Yes, because 24,000 basis is greater than 10,000 return of capital. Finally, that's going to reduce basis, which you'll see below. I'm going to show you that calculation. And then finally, if there's anything remaining after step two of this distribution, if basis isn't enough to capture, then it's capital gain distribution, long-term or short-term, depending on how long the stock was held. All three of these numbers will add up to the distribution. So 30 plus 10 plus zero is 40. They'll always have to add up. That's why it's considered a waterfall. Now, remember, part two of the waterfall, the return of capital, we always have to adjust the basis if there is any number here that's considered return of capital. So the starting basis is 24000 minus the 10000 return of capital means that Kiwi's ending basis is $14,000. So starting um, after this year, so starting next year, Kiwi has a basis of 14000 So if Kiwi's stock is sold or is in our distribution, you use 14000 as the basis. So that's the consequences to Kiwi. $30,000 dividend, $10,000 return of capital, and a $14,000 ending basis in the stock. Now we have to figure out the uh, tax consequences to fruit sushi. Again, step one and two, no consequences. But step four, you always have to determine this because we need to know accumulated EMP for next year. So the accumulated EMP for next year is always a formula. Beginning accumulated EMP, which here it's zero because of formation, year formation, plus or minus the current year EMP, which we calculated. Um, and that's from that's from the problem. That's not from step two. That's from the problem. Not number two. And the reason for that is because we adjust step two for the gain after that. So we're told $30,000 is EMP plus the $2,000 for the gain. 
I'm sorry, plus zero for gain. Plus the step two for gain, I should say, which is zero here. And then you subtract away the amount of the adjustment that is a dividend. And again, that's almost always going to be the case. The only exception is where the basis of property distributed is going to be greater than the fair market value, which is very rare. So it's really just helpful just to learn the amount of the dividend to the shareholder is considered what reduces down, right? We had $40,000 uh, distribution, but only $30,000 was considered a dividend. And the reason we do that, by the way, is because why should this go down, go negative? If we had $30,000 current year EMP and then we had a, um, a $40,000 subtraction, that makes no sense for next year's EMP because only $30,000 came out of EMP, which remember, if you haven't watched the video why we use EMP, the idea is that it's whatever portions from the earnings should be treated like it's like taxes earnings, but whatever portions coming from the capital of the business should be treated like capital and should be recovered by basis. So that's the idea because we're going to use EMP for next year, which the ending accumulated EMP is zero. So I hope this helps you understand. This is a very basic um, example. I've gone through everything though very thoroughly. There will be more examples, so please make sure to look for more examples for different variants of um, this situation that will help you understand. Now in those future examples, those future problems I do, I'm going to go a little bit faster through the steps and everything. I'm not going to explain everything you know, as, as fully as I've done here unless there's a new concept. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please make sure to watch as many times because if you understand this, you really do have the framework down for understanding the taxation of corporate distributions.